Hey guys, Henning and Morton from Flip Normals here. In this video, we're going to cover the Flip Normals Lightning Scene 2.0 for Arnold. We made some nice enhancements to this, including uh, six new lighting scenes, and a uh, Macbeth chart, a grey sphere, and uh, a chrome ball as well. So the very first thing you're going to have to do whenever you load this up, is, or at least for the first time, is you're going to have to get back the old style legacy render layers here. So you do this by going to Window, Settings Preferences, Preferences, and then we go to Rendering, and we set this to Legacy Render Layers. When you hit Save, you're gonna be prompted by a message telling you you have to restart Maya. Once you go, once you go back to, once you restart Maya, you're gonna have a tab here called Render, and now you can switch to Render Layers. So this was a very conscious decision by us because yeah. the old the old Legacy Render Layers work really well for prototyping. You yeah. just click through, you apply, it's done. So it's, it's not as powerful as the new system, but it's a lot easier just to use in for, from a user point of view for our setup here. So essentially, just to give you a broad overview of how this works, you load in your model. This can be an OBJ or whatever you want. And you put this under in the character group and you just put this under here. So this is now going to be automatically be rotating around. We've, uh, we've enabled um, rotation on the group here. You can see there's a little keyframe here. And uh, this is also uh, automatically linked to all the render setups here. So wherever you're going here, wherever, which, wherever you click one, you can see that various light setups are being set up for this. So like we said for the old one, we had uh, 12 or 12 one here with a bonus for 13. So all these here are now new. So the very first thing you're gonna have to do is, uh, once this is set up, is you go to uh, the Macbeth chart, and then under the chart here, you're gonna have to just change the color of this, uh, or rather the file input here. So this is what it's currently set to. You're just gonna have to go into the download directory and just set this to the PSD file. So we currently use, are using the PSD file in lab colors. You can change this to an sRGB if you need to. This is gonna look a bit funky in the viewport, but it's gonna render just fine. We also have a set of bases here for you, which are really handy. So if you go into character bases and you just unhide these, you can see you have a bunch of these guys here. So you can just move them out here and you can just see what they look like. So these, feel free to modify these to your heart's content. These are just made just to make your, your models just slightly better in terms of presentation for them. So hide that. So we also have um, we also have two cameras here. If you go to panel perspective, and you can see we have two cameras here, or you can find them under the camera group. So we have the default one here. Uh, when you move this around, this is um, the, the Macbeth chart and the great and the spheres have been parented to it. So you see when you move this around, these are also moving around in the viewport here, which is pretty handy. You can find this just directly parented underneath the standard camera. We also have the close up camera. You can just middle mouse button this, drag into the viewport to change to this. The only difference between this and the regular one is this has depth of field enabled. So we can the way we can just tweak that is you go to the camera settings, we're clicking on this little dude. Then we go to the close-up camera shape and we go to Arnold. This is just a little tab here, a little drop down. And um, so there are tons of cool options here you can generally do to your camera. So you can change the exposure, you can change rolling shutter and whatnot. Here we have uh, the depth of field. So this is enabled. And pretty much the only thing we care about here is the aperture size. The higher number this is, the blurrier your image will be. Uh, so lower number, sharper image. We also have the focus distance. This is essentially just, uh, just what area is going to be sharp in the image. So to make your job a bit easier, we already have we have a distance sphere, which we've enabled here. So if you unhide this, we have a little sphere. The way I do this is I just hit the V key or hold on the V key and I just snap it to whatever point I want to be sharp. So in this point, that or in this case, we're just going to we want the eye to be sharp. And so essentially, we want the distance between the current view and the sphere. In order to do that, we go to display, heads up display, and object details. And then we're gonna get this, which says distance from camera. So we can now just input the distance from camera here, which was now here was 61, type 61, and this is now gonna be the sharp area. This is really handy. There are tons of ways of doing this. We just found that using an actual distance sphere here is, is the best way. So the way we, 
like we said before, the way we actually need to use the lining scene here is uh, you drag your, your character in here, and then we can just start going through a couple of these. Um, so let's say we go to the first one, neutral. You can see the lighting changed, and um, there are tons of materials which comes with the scene here. So to enable those, you can go to, you can just right click, and you can go just here, existing material. This, this list gets a bit long though, so there are several ways of doing this. Uh, if, if you don't have enough space here. You can go to um, display and hit the DAG objects only. This will, this will display every single item or node in your scene. So we have a couple of them here, like character, uh, background materials, character, and here we name them uh, in a way which would make sense. So here you can see character R1, which stands for, for uh, render one. You can just middle mouse button, drag this onto it. And you can just really quickly just go through and just change which one you want. So for this one, uh, we suggested that you can use the number one here for it. You can also, you can use whatever you want to. Feel free to just go crazy with this. Feel free to get various shader library from what you found online or you made yourself. This is just a starting point. So the moment you've done that, we can just go to, we just want to use the default camera here, the standard camera. Then we can go to Arnold and just hit the Arnold render view. This is a really nice, uh, this is a really nice, fairly new addition to it. Just hit uh, the refresh button here. And now we're gonna see here. Uh, now currently it's rendering through the, the, the close-up. We can change this to standard camera. Just re refresh this one. And now you're gonna see what this looks like. This gives you an incredibly quick preview for this. Uh, you can see there is an issue here. Uh, we still need to repath our Macbeth chart here. So you can just do that. Um, just find, find whatever the, wherever the file lives and just go in here and just make sure this is set up correctly. And then this is gonna render just fine. Uh, we can just go to another setup here and um, just set up, this is render 09. So we just go to render 09 white, and then we just hit refresh. And then we just get a separate setup here for this. So all of this is super easy to set up. All the, you, you just simply just drag your model into the group, then we um, you sign the materials, and then you hit render, and that's it. It's very easy, very easy, and very quick way to get super nice lighting for your characters.